if I'm going to graph him and if I'm going to create a t-bar chart, I have no choice to then to try to do the domain because remember that I can put x values in to make the radicand negative. So essentially, the first thing I'm going to look for is the domain. It's, it's even index, so 5 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Minus x has to be greater than or equal to minus 5. Or x is less than or equal to positive 5. So that says as I set up my t-bar chart, <coughs> I start at 5 and smaller because all my x's have to be smaller than or equal to 5. So my t-bar chart, I'm going to start at 5 and work my way back. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. This is the square root of 5 minus 5. Well, that's 0. Square root of 0, which is 0. This is the square root of 5 minus 4. That's the square root of 1. This is the square root of 5 minus 3. That's the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 is, I need to get myself out of here second uh, square root of 2 is uh, 1.4. Square root of 5 minus 2 is the square root of 3. It's about 1.7. Square root of 5 minus 1, square root of <coughs> 4, this is 2. Square root of 5 minus 0, is the square root of 5 and the square root of 5 is 2.2 and the square root of 5 minus a minus 1 is the square root of 6 and the square root of 6 is 2.4 That should be enough to give me a shape of this thing. So I'm going to come over and do my coordinate points. If x equals 5, y equals 0. If x equals 4, y equals 1. If x equals 3, y equals about 1 and a half. That's 1.4 x equals 2, y equals about 1 and 3 quarters. x equals 1, y equals 2. x equals 0, y equals 2.2, it's about 2 and a third. y equals negative 1, I'm about 2 and a half. And if you join the dots, he looks like a, parab a U shaped graph on, on his side which is what he should look like. But in order to get a shape, you need a lot of points, unless you know something about them. And that's why you have to have the domain, because otherwise it's wasted points. What's the domain of x plus 2? All real numbers. And that's because I've got an odd index. Now, when I'm dealing with all real numbers, I'm going to go to about the middle. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And in the middle, I'm going to put 0. And then I go out from either side. So that gives me, since the domain is all real numbers, I'm just going to go out from either side. So this is 0, uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Hopefully that gives me enough coordinate points. This is going to be the cube root of negative 3 plus 2, which is the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1. 
This is the cube root of negative 2 plus 2, so far easy peasy. This is the cube root of 0, which is 0. This is the cube root of negative 3, negative 1, which is the cube root of negative 4. And now we have to revert to our calculators. Why is that negative 3? Oh, I'm sorry. It's an x. And I am not in the x world. I am, I'm, doing, I'm doing something else. I'm doing the last problem is what I'm doing. So this is negative 1 plus 2. Oh, thank goodness. We'll take it. Which is 1, or 1. This is the cube root of 0 plus 2, which is the cube root of 2. Haven't a clue. So if you have a grapher, we'll start there. There is this little key called math. And if you press math, notice what number f number four is. What, <laughs> what do you think number four is? Cube root. So I'll press four, and I want the cube root of two. And that's uh, 1.3. Now, if you're on our little cheapy calculators, somebody should have looked up in advance. Oh, they didn't. Oh, yeah, on this guy, above this key right here, do you see this little, this says x root? You can take any root. If I want a cube root, I'd say cube, that key, which is second, upper carrot. Now, Whatever I want to take the cube root of, in this case I want to take the cube root of 2. It's not 3 times, it puts that 3 where that x is. And there it is, it's 1.3. So you have cube roots. You have any root that you like because you can put any number in there that you want. So this is going to be the cube root of 1 plus 2, which is the cube root of 3, and the cube root of 3. Now here's interesting about you guys that have the TI-30, press the up arrow. Notice it came back. And now all I have to do is to make that a, instead of a 2, I make it a 3. Cube root of 3 is 1.4. And cube root of 2 plus 2, cube root of 4, and this is easy to do. Press the up arrow. And 1.6. And cube root of 3 plus 2, cube root of 5. And now let me move back to the grapher for some of you. And it's math. Cube root is 4. And 5. 1.7. 
Now we just graph them. So negative 3, whoops, wrong piece of graph paper here. Uh, negative 3, negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 2, 0. Negative, negative 2, 0. Negative 1, 1. 0, 1.3. 1, 1.4, 2, 1.6, 3, 1.7. Now he's a curved graph, and he looks like an S. He's going to continue to go in, go along like that. He's an S on his side. That's what cube root looks like. He's an S on his side. They all look the same. Square root kind of looks like a the actual square root of x looks like this. He always has that shape and he can be on any place on the paper. And this he still has that shape, but he is pointing backwards and he's moved. But he still has that shape. This is basic square root. So he'll always look like that. He could be upside down, he could be backwards, he could be moved elsewhere. If I want to take a look at the cube root of x, he's always going to be this S-shaped curve. But he could be moved anywhere on the paper. So once you start, realize he's going to be an S. He could be flipped in some ways. But you're just dealing with basics. So that's cube root and square root.